In my most recent video, I talk about how Prince Harry seems extremely sad and look into exactly why that is the case. But the piece I don't touch on is one very important aspect about Meghan Markle, and that is the fact that she is a narcissist. It's about being authentic. Now, dating a narcissist can be extremely painful. I myself have dated three narcissists in the past, and those are definitely the relationships I regret the most. The reason those relationships are so painful is because narcissists are most concerned with their own personal needs, and they prioritize that so intensely that it comes at the utter devastation of the other person. And yet those relationships can be the hardest to leave. Because when things are good, they're so, so good. But when they're bad, they're awful. But the memory of the good times and the possibility of the return to the good times keeps us absolutely glued to the relationship and to the narcissist, which utterly sucks. Maybe this is something that many of you can relate to. I'm sure many people have struggled with this and continue to struggle with being in a relationship with a narcissist. So in this video, I want to talk about how to identify a narcissist. That way we can all steer so damn clear of them. So let's talk about the six most common traits found in a narcissist. And let's use my favorite current topic, Meghan Markle, as the example. The first and most prevalent quality in a narcissist is the fact that they care deeply about what people think of them. They are very image obsessed, which is why they are very careful about what they put out into the world and are comfortable with going as far as lying about their life, about their work. I guess, and also thank you for asking, because not many people have asked if I'm okay, but it's... Uh... If it means they'll get the desired effect, in Meghan's case, she wanted to be perceived by Harry as a victim. A victim of a broken family, victim of racism, of sexism. So Harry's protective instincts would kick in, making it possible for Meghan to get away with everything she wanted, which is a title and a prince on her arm. She even lied about paying for her college, which her father really paid for. It was through scholarships, financial aid programs, and work study where my earnings from a job on campus went directly towards my tuition, that I was able to attend university. And she super embellished her impact on a sexist TV ad for detergent, claiming she wrote a letter asking for it to be changed. When I was just 11 years old, I unknowingly and somehow accidentally became a female advocate when in fact, the company changed it before she had even written the letter. Narcissists feel like they are special, so they often spin up tales that feed that perception that they are absolutely perfect. Now, when you meet someone who might seem like a narcissist, you might have your guard up. But this brings us to the second narcissistic trait, and that is the tendency to love bomb. Actually, will always be us together as a team, so I think I think she's capable so of... So nicely said, isn't it? Yeah, I don't know. She's capable, of, she's capable of anything. To overwhelm a person with love, attention, kind words, the works with the singular goal to lower your guard. Narcissists want to be loved, so if they see someone who is resistant to their charm, they will work on them even more, to reel them in, to get them to fall in love. We saw Meghan do this often with Harry, where she would stare adoringly at him, defer to him getting attention or answering questions, hang on to him protectively, even keep her hand on his back constantly. In Harry's case, I don't think he was very resistant to falling for Meghan's charms. The fact that I fell in love with Meghan so incredibly quickly was a sort of confirmation to me that all the stars were aligned, everything was just perfect. It was this beautiful woman just tripped and fell into my life. I <laughs> fell into her life. But I have experienced instances where I was a little wary of the person, and that made them pull off all the stops even more to make me fall for them. But what happens when you let your guard down and you're completely in love with the narcissist? Well, this is the point that you'll see the third narcissistic trait, manipulation. As quickly and as willingly they can give you all of their love and attention, narcissists can take it away. And boy, does that feel cold. This is probably the most difficult aspect of a relationship with a narcissist, because while they maintain their cool, 
they make the other person feel crazy for thinking that something has changed, when it clearly has. The reason for this shift in affection is actually to maintain stronger control. When we're in love, an important aspect of a healthy relationship is consistency. Make that love and attention inconsistent, and that will drive any reasonable person crazy. We see this happening with Prince Harry, where he rises and falls to Meghan's tune. There are instances where Meghan is clearly goading him while maintaining her perfect composure. And let's talk about the mental games that narcissists play, like suddenly pulling out and wearing a present that her previous husband Trevor gave to Meghan on their wedding day, or randomly stepping out and getting photographed without her ring on, or better yet, publicly flirting with her friend Serena Williams' husband while watching her friend play at Wimbledon. Are you happy that your girlfriend's moved to America? I don't know what you're talking about. Don't know nothing about that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're on the West Coast, but... Never seen her, never heard of her, don't know her. Narcissists use many tactics to maintain the power in their relationships. So gone now are all those looks of adoration. Instead, Meghan is often caught looking at Harry with annoyance and agitation, practically trying to squeeze him out of frame. And speaking of squeezing out of frame, let's talk about the next narcissistic quality, love for attention. Dear God, do narcissists love attention? Now, if you're going to marry royalty, it pretty much goes that you will be playing second fiddle. Add that to the fact that Harry is never going to reach the throne. He and Meghan are constantly sidelined and playing a role in the background. Yeah. That's not going to work for Meghan, who has to be the center of attention. We see this every time she rushes in front of Harry so she can hobnob first, or look at him angrily if he's getting too much attention. We also see that Meghan is not above taking away a bride's glory on her wedding day by inciting pregnancy rumors. And Twitter world broke out in speculation yet again that she was hiding the beginning of a baby bump. Or the fact that all of her announcements and releases compete with important royal events. Meghan needs attention. For someone who absolutely cries about privacy, here she is on an engagement, repeatedly pushing back her coat so that her bump is more obvious for all those photographs. Now, if any of her behavior is ever called out as inappropriate or strange, that is unacceptable. This is the next narcissistic trait. They can't take criticism. Narcissists feel like they're better than everyone around them. So naturally, if they're ever called out for their behavior, they go immediately on the offensive by either fighting back with manipulation or more commonly, tossing people out of their lives. Megan is well versed in both of these strategies. She adeptly weaponized her vulnerability, making it seem that reasonable criticism that the press or the public had for her was race or gender driven, effectively redirecting the attention from her behavior to a national conversation about how racist the British society is. But Meghan also tosses people out when she needs to, from her entire family, including her father, to many, many friends, to forcing Harry to break with his family and friends if they ever criticized her which they did. Narcissists have no room in their life for anyone who doesn't think they're perfect. Now let's talk about the last trait, and that is that narcissists use people. This has been one of the more common criticisms levied against Megan, where many people feel badly used and then discarded by Megan once she's no longer needed them. Like I mentioned in my previous video about Meghan, from Piers Morgan and Lizzie Cundy to her childhood best friends to her father and uncle, Meghan has left a wake of many angry people in her rise to the top. Uh, I just think she's a slight social climber, I'm afraid. And when I see the way, I mean, look at her wedding, there was only one member of her family there. The rest couldn't be risked. And there's no denying that Meghan is also using Prince Harry. Her engagement and marriage to him raised her public profile, something she couldn't wait for, which is why before their relationship went public, Meghan made extremely strong hints in the hopes that people would put it together. And yet she keeps talking about how she just wants privacy. Yeah, sure you do. Well, there you have it, the six traits commonly found in a narcissist. 
hope you found this video helpful so the next time you come across a narcissist, you can spot them for what they are and keep your distance because they are bad news. Also, make sure to check out the other two videos I've made on Prince Harry and Meghan Markle where I go into more detail about Meghan's relationship with the press as well as why Prince Harry looks so damn sad. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and please hit that subscribe button and I'll see you next time.